Hello, and welcome to Lecture 2 of Human Energy Use in Phys 2104. In this video, we're going to look at heat engines. Many, many, many ways that we produce energy, from car engines to coal plants to nuclear plants, are heat engines. And so a basic understanding of them is necessary to understand human energy use. In a thermodynamics course, we would probably spend a quarter or maybe even a third of the course on heat engines. Obviously we can't do that, we're going to spend one lecture on heat engines in this course, so our goal is just to get the basic ideas. The first basic idea we need is the idea of a heat reservoir. A heat reservoir is an object which we can add thermal energy to, and despite the addition of thermal energy, the temperature of the object doesn't change. And similarly, we can remove thermal energy of it, and yet the temperature doesn't change. Now, no real object works this way. However, it can be an extremely good approximation. One situation where treating an object as a heat reservoir is a good approximation is if we're talking about an object that has a very large heat capacity, so that when we add thermal energy, its temperature does change, but negligibly. So, for example, with coal and nuclear plants that are on the coast, they often dump their waste thermal energy into the ocean. And this will locally warm the ocean slightly, but overall it has virtually no effect on the temperature of the ocean. And so we could say the ocean is a heat reservoir. It really isn't, but it's a good approximation. Similarly, we can have objects where there is some other energy input or output which compensates for the thermal energy that we are adding or removing so that the temperature stays constant. So, for example, the burner of your stove is constantly giving thermal energy to your pot, but despite that thermal energy flowing out of the burner, the burner main maintains a relatively constant temperature, and it's because of electric potential energy being converted constantly to thermal energy in the burner. And so the burner can be treated as a heat reservoir. Now we're ready to see the basic idea of a heat engine, and to do so let's look at a simple but very impractical example of a heat engine. So suppose we have a piston. The gases inside the piston and the piston itself will be our system, and we're going to see how we can use this piston to do some work. We're going to raise some boxes from one floor of a building to another floor of a building. So what we would do is we would push a box onto the piston, and then we would use some heat source to add thermal energy. So in other words, there's a heat exchange with the environment. Heat comes into the system, and that makes the gases in the piston expand, doing work on the system. Now we push the box off, we remove our heat source, and now there will be another heat exchange. Thermal energy will flow out from the system back into the environment, and eventually the, the piston gets back to its original height. And we repeat this process, and we can repeat it as many times as we like. This piston is a very simple heat engine. It is a system that sits between what we call a hot reservoir, which in this case is just something that we're burning, and a cold reservoir, which is presumably just the ambient air in the room, and it takes heat in from one, sends heat out to the other, and in the process does some work on the environment. And this is our definition of a heat engine. It's any system that takes heat in from the environment, rejects heat out to the environment, does work on the environment in the process. And there's one more important thing. Notice that in our piston, it returns to its original state periodically. This is important. A heat engine must operate in a cycle, which just means that it returns to its original state periodically. Conservation of energy now dictates that the work done must just be the difference between the heat in and the heat out. In the case of this simple example of a heat engine, the system is closed. Note that it's not isolated. 
there is exchange of energy with the environment, heat in, heat out, and work done on the environment. But it is closed, there's no matter exchanged with the environment. But now let's look at a more practical sort of heat engine. This is a simple picture of a steam engine. There's a boiler with a heat source under it, which maintains the water in the boiler at some fairly constant high temperature. And it has two valves connected to a piston. And again, the piston will be our system. The way the steam engine works, very simply, is that first valve one is open, and steam rushes from the boiler into the piston, bringing heat with it. And the piston does work on a wheel or a drive shaft of some machinery or something. Valve one closes when the piston is at its maximum expansion. And then valve two opens, and the steam rushes out, carrying heat out with it, and then closes, returning it to its original state, so that this is a cycle. Notice now that this system is not closed. This system is open, because not only is there heat exchange with the environment and work done on the environment, so energy in and out of the system, but the system is also exchanging matter with the environment. And this is perhaps more common for heat engines. Let's check your understanding by connecting this idea of a simple heat engine back to ideas that you've seen earlier in the course. So suppose we have a steam engine which is taking in heat from the boiler at a rate of 10 kilowatts and it's expelling heat by venting steam to the environment at a rate of 8.5 kilowatts. What is the efficiency of this steam engine? 